During this workshop, you will hear a lot about the caterpillars that do the damage and the adults and recognizing the adults. You've just heard about the eggs of Lepidoptera. Now we will discuss the pupae of Lepidoptera. In this demonstration, we're going to key out a pupa to family level using Steve Pessoa's guide to some pupal Lepidoptera with emphasis on frequently intercepted species. The characters we use are provided in our pupal lecture by Dr. Richard Brown. The first couplet in our key is looking at the pilifers and whether or not they are present or absent. This is the pupa we are examining and the pilifers are absent in this species. Pilifers are a dark patch as seen here and in this cactus moth here we can see them present as they are present in the pyroloidea. That's that darker patch right there. So we go to the next couplet. Pilifers absent, couplet three. Antenna meet at the meson or antenna parallel to each other at the meson. The antenna are on the sides beside the mesothoracic legs. They're the lighter areas here. And we can see that they don't meet at the meson. However, they are parallel to each other. So we go to couplet five. These characters can also be seen in Mosher's 1916 publication for more information. Couplet five, spines present on the abdominal dorsum or abdom abdominal dorsum smooth. We have to flip this specimen over to see the dorsal side. And we can see it is smooth. However, we have here a tortricid to show you what the spines look like. And if we zoom in, we can see clearly that spines are present. In tortricids, we have two rows of spines on each abdominal segment. So spines are absent and the abdominal dorsum is smooth. We continue to couplet six. For this character, we'll need to flip our specimen over again. And we're looking at the wings. Wings extend past A4, or wings do not extend past A4. And to get a better view, we'll look at the side so we can count the segments. One, two, three, and the fourth segment. And we can tell that the wings do not extend past the fourth segment. So we go to couplet seven. Had they extended past the fourth segment, we would be in the euponymutoids. Couplet seven is easy. Larval exuvia hairy, which would mean the Arebidae, or larval exuvia smooth. This pupa is smooth and there is no hairy larval exuvia associated with it. So we go to couplet eight. Maxilla we'll be looking at. So we're going back to that area where we were looking for the pilifers near the face. Maxillae extend to caudal margin of wings, labial palpi, and, of, and labial palpi and often the prothoracic femur exposed. The maxillae start up here and extend down the length to the bottom, which describes the first part of this couplet, maxillae extending to caudal margin of wings. But we can also look for the labial palpi to ensure that they are exposed. And if we zoom in, we can see that they are. And a lighter shaded region between the maxillae, or proboscis, and the mesothoracic legs is shown. That is the prothoracic femur. So those are both exposed, and our maxillae extends to the caudal margin of the wings. So we know that we have a noctuid or an arebid. And within Stephen Passoa's key, he provides a shorter key to some of the subfamilies that can be used if you are intercepting pupae of noctuids. For this demonstration, we'll be showing you how to sex pupae. Here we have a male pupa. We know this because we can see the gonopore, which is anterior to the anal slit. The gonopore is on the ninth segment, and we can see the intersegmental region between the ninth and the eighth, 
right above it, is a straight line. If we look at this female pupa right here, we can also see an anal slit and a gonopore, and we can also see the eighth and ninth intersegmental membrane. But it is now in a V shape, and it leads up to the gonopore.